Hello and welcome to the show. We start this week's GTA 5 Downhill Chaos with an Aston Martin Signet that apparently interested the hikers. We have got a uh, rather crazy wing on the back. We've actually got a diffuser as well on the Signet because, you know, you need those things to get his vehicle to go fast. Well, things did not go to plan on the opening attempt. I got on the brakes a little bit too late. Quite an easy thing to do with the cars down this course, especially with the bumps into turn one. And well, the Aston Martin was tumbling, eventually gets stopped uh, by, uh, by a tree. Normally, when you go tumbling down there, it is not a, a nice, easy stop, such as that one. Oh, we've also got bull bars on the front for running over the hikers that are get in the way. One of the big dangers, in fact, probably one of the biggest dangers on this entire course to the Aston Martin was the bushes. They pretty much stopped the car dead. So, can't afford to be going near them. The other big danger is, well, the tiny wheelbase does mean the car has a tendency to, if not spin out, get bounced around quite a lot and often bounced very, very sideways. And if that bounce happens to take you towards the bushes, then you're in an awful lot of trouble. Uh, a fairly hefty bounce on the landing means a little bit too much overstay. I tried to catch it, but it's such a twitchy vehicle when things start going a little bit wrong that uh, there really wasn't a huge amount I could do there to stop the Aston Martin from uh, going around in a circle. And if you do run a little bit wide through corners, uh, you can't really get away with things. Again, very short wheelbase relatively tall car I was expecting it in fact to sort of roll over more than it actually did uh, it got a little bit on two wheels from time to time uh, got a little unhappy across the landing of the jump I tried to save it but again once the car is sort of uh, once the car's got a, got a twitch going on uh, there's nothing you can do and a much ride, wider road, you know, a normal tarmac road you'd be fine, you could gather it all back up again but when you're on Mount Chiliad especially the first part so incredibly narrow once it's uh, speared one direction you're going to go and fly off the mountain you just can't save the vehicle another big two-wheeled moment on the landing of a jump sees me completely and utterly miss the uh, turning which is not particularly <laughs> helpful in uh, that one took a little while to kind of get the hang of driving this vehicle you certainly had to be very careful with the car the large the large bumps and the large jumps could cause it a little bit of uh, issues i actually really pushed my luck there i thought we might lose the back end the way that i had i landed kind of heading towards the bush so you got to frantically get the car to the other side of the road i was worried about uh, losing the back end and spinning the aston but it's uh, we all got away with it just about the plus side of having such a tiny wheelbase is it is very very agile through these incredibly tight corners you know the hairpin is never going to pose a problem for this car. Getting the signet around there is is just a complete and utter non-issue. Uh, but uh, everywhere else on the course, we've got little faster quarters, especially quarters like this one where there's big bumps in the middle of it. That's when there's such a tiny wheelbase can be a little bit of a problem. And the fact that it's, you know, it's not designed, let's face it, for off-roading in this manner, the bumps could cause some fairly, fairly sizable issues. For the Aston, as we come across the final of the big jumps, landing down there was quite nice. It was the little banking getting the car on two wheels that you had to be uh, aware of. Definitely had to be slow down this part to make sure you did not end up in the bushes. If you clip the bushes, you're going to get stopped dead, or if you just clip them with like the front corner, easily pull the car to the side. So had to be mindful of them. Actually ran a little bit wide through the final corner as we cross the line with the uh, the signet there and a little bit of a tumble it was I, I thought it could have gone worse uh, down the course it all honestly did get a little stuck trying to reverse it away from the uh, the tree yeah on sort of like the really large landings on the most part it wasn't actually too bad it was more of the the, the smaller bumps that would cause issues at sort of mid corner for the car up next we move to uh, something a little bit older a Renault 11 turbo this vehicle uh, yeah front wheel drive car and we don't see there's not too many of them in, in GTA 5, not too many have uh, have gone down Chiliad either, so was curious to see how uh, this one would do. Certainly, getting started, there is a lot of wheel spin. A fair decent amount of, of power, it seems, available in this, because it does spin the wheels an awful, awful lot, trying to uh, to get it off the, off the line. Much nicer across these bumps, much more predictable than we got with the Aston Martin, which is uh, certainly helpful, and things went pretty smoothly on the opening run until, well, this quarter has caused many a vehicle trouble and it was no exception 
for the Renault. It's a few millimetres away from disaster, really, on on that. I was too late on the brakes, and in doing that, you run wide, clip the wall, and you're not going to save it. I do exactly the same thing next time out. It's actually more that I was wrongly positioned on the road as the car bounces around. We get a... <laughs> very a very slow speed roll just for good measure and the bonnet has gone skating off down the mountain but it was on the third attempt that i got a clean run with this car i wasn't expecting this to be as easy to drive down here as it was it's a really surprisingly good vehicle uh, we get a little bit bounced on this uh, this particular uh, attempt uh, managed to avoid the hikers we do get quite lucky in trying to avoid the hikers uh you you do run the risk and i dropped the wheel far too far over the edge down there we got a big bounce on the rear bumper it shattered the rear windscreen as you saw but we landed it back on the road nicely and neatly and could carry on got a very large two-wheel moment as well around one of the corners that we could get away with i was a little bit worried i think if i'd done many many attempts i don't think it'd be too hard to get this car to roll over with some heavy cornering especially if there was any assistance from uh, a slight kind of raised inside of uh, of the corner i think you could probably get this to roll without too much in the way of uh, problems of course being front wheel drive we don't really have that much in the way of oversteer to be uh, be worrying about the bushes uh, didn't i don't think i really hit them hard enough to find out what they did to this vehicle it did very well on the landings of the heavier jumps then things go absolutely bonkers and somehow i'm still still not 100 percent sure how i kept everything under control down there i felt sure that we were going to see the car soaring off into the scenery it was not the case though for the renault we do go for a massive flip having uh, crossed the line it was almost completely and utterly out of control coming down to the uh, second to last quarter only only fractionally uh, did i have uh, control of the vehicle to get it slowed down for the second to last quarter i was quite tentative rolling the vehicle over i wanted to try and keep it up on this uh, ledge and not have it go uh, rolling down into into the ditch yeah quite an impressively good vehicle this one i really wasn't expecting it to uh, drive as well as it does there is a little bit of um a wheel spin certainly setting off wastes a bit of time kind of getting up to speed but after that initial launch pretty damn good uh yeah most of the damage in that was done after crossing the line with the other uh, big flip and finally we've got a, another complete and utter change of pace we've got the hoonicorn yep this i thought would be a, a good vehicle to go down chiliad and then immediately regretted my decision about a second later there are some rather difficulties rather big difficulties i should say uh, with with this vehicle uh the first one being well there's not a huge amount of grip it is designed to be kind of a drifty jim carnery car and the second one being the brakes i was trying because there is a huge amount of power as you would expect in this so i was seeing if i could get it turned and kind of fire it back up the mountain uh, he didn't really like doing the turning bit uh, particularly well so yeah we tumbled even further down the course uh, yeah, so the big difficulties are, well, trying to put the power down means that you can spin the car so incredibly easy. Yes, it is four-wheel drive, but there's still a huge amount of horsepower in this and not a lot of grip to go with it, which means when you try and get it out of these corners and, uh, and carry any speed, it does like to go sideways, which can often translate to a spin. It does do some pretty good donuts, though, if... Uh... <laughs> You, if you can uh, can get it going and there's some reversing in there as well yeah it will spin around very very easily the brakes are just as scary though in this car when you go on the brakes it's only the tiniest amount of braking is required to lock pretty much everything up which then means that you kind of lose all steering as well so uh, you've got to be really really careful uh, under braking i tried to um save the car we got to start getting sideways i thought about booting it to get myself out of trouble that wasn't working I had to then get on the brakes so I didn't go soaring off the mountain in a different direction and that didn't work either as we slowly tumbled over the edge. This is what I was talking about, trying to get it slowed down towards turn one. I was having to use so little uh, brake trigger movement. I did all of this with a Xbox 360 controller. I was trying to be so delicate with the brakes in this car. It just wasn't enough to stop the thing from locking. It, it Pretty much as soon as you got on the brake, that just meant everything everything locked up i may have tried to sort of drift slide my way around that turn and, and i was hoping i could boot it and save it uh, there wasn't really enough grip though to uh, make that work at uh, at that point and too much speed as well very easy to get carried away on on that particular corner 
Again, we've got one of the bigger braking zones now coming down here. You're really fighting the car. You see, pretty much every time I even think about going near the brakes, stuff locks up. So you have to effectively be your own ABS to try and stop the uh, car from locking up into every braking zone. And I was out a little bit wide, and once the car's kind of over the edge there, there's so little grip in this vehicle that I couldn't bring it back onto the course. We got around the second to last corner this time out, but a bump got me sideways, and once the hoolicorn started going sideways, that's all it wanted to do. Ran wide, clipped my rock, and now we're pointing the wrong direction just before the finish line. It took a little bit of time to uh, really get the hang of this vehicle, and even then, it's it's a tough, tough car to drive down Chiliad. It's not. So it's, this is great fun. I did drive it around the city for a little while. Fantastic fun driving it around there. But Chiliad is not um, not particularly suitable for the Ahuna Corner. And it is more to do with the brakes than it is to do with the lack of grip. I mean, the lack of grip is a little bit scary. But the fact that uh, the brakes like to lock absolutely everything up is he's, he's not he's not too helpful basically you see see here i got a little bit eager on the brake trigger and it just kind of kicks the car sideways and causes no end of problem i think by this stage i was just about got the hang of the, the point at which i could hold the brake trigger and not have everything locked up but it did mean i had to brake incredibly early for the sections now the rather slidey nature of the car did help it get around the hairpin that was about one of the only quarters that this vehicle had no trouble with getting around the rest of them were pretty damn terrifying because if it wasn't the brakes causing issues then it was the the lack of grip causing issues it meant you just couldn't really carry the speed because this road is not wide enough to do larry silly sideways stuff and you can't use that to carry speed especially not with the bumps as well that are found around the outside of all of these corners the only real solution is you have to drive pretty damn slowly down here because you simply cannot carry any corner speed and then when you try and get on the brakes everything locks we're again well out wide and i was thinking this was going to be a recipe for disaster somehow managing with a little bit of luck bouncing it off the uh, the cliffside got the car slowed down and turned for the uh, second to last corner or one more quarter to go get it very sideways just boot it at this point and like eh, we'll find uh, kind of skid our way across the line ever so slightly clipped a mountain biker with the <laughs> Ranted the vehicle, he lost a little bit of time in that uh, in that final quarter with a huge slide. But th this is such a hard car to drive down down Chiliad on the normal tarmac roads. Absolute riot to drive, great fun. But uh, down Chiliad, we do not have the grip or the brakes at all. Lots of speed. Uh, couldn't really test how the suspension dealt because it wasn't going fast enough. On to the times, and it's a very impressive time from the Renault 11. That 127.5 will put it in to 53rd place. It is next to the other very fast front-wheel drive car, the, the Penumbra, when it, a mod had turned that into a front-wheel drive vehicle. Only a tenth of a second down on the Penumbra, same time as the Felon All Track. It beats a Shelby GT500 and a Porsche 911 GT1. That Renault is actually not a bad car at all down here, despite the crazy final uh, section on the course. The Cigna, also not too bad, considering the tiny wheelbase and the issues that go with that on such a bumpy course. 132.0 is fairly respectable. It beats a Ford F-150. It is a fraction down on the, the Frankenstrange and the uh, Space Docker. It's, you know, pretty pretty good going from the uh, the Cigna certainly not the easiest car to uh, to drive down this course though it's uh yeah, quite twitchy, quite easy to get in a lot of trouble with that one. And the Hoonicorn is all the way down in 127th place, 151.7. It does beat the other drift vehicles. The RX-7, the Schwarzer, and the Stratton that all went down. They all had a drift mod installed when they went down. The Hoonicorn is a little bit better than them. It does have a little bit more grip, but it's not by much. It gets beaten by a Ford Model T. That's how much the Hoonicorn struggles to utilise its power and to get slowed down before a quarter. I think the Ford Model T tops out at about 30 or 40 miles an hour, so that puts into perspective just how much struggles there are in that Hoonicorn to try and uh, and get it down at Chiliad. Well, that is it for this uh, video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As ever, I will uh, put links to all the mods that I've used in the description so you can download them and have a go with them yourself but uh, until next time uh, goodbye